بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا بفضلك من فضلك علما وتعليما اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته This afternoon we want to share two more hadith of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this time one hadith is about the virtue of fasting uh, in a more general sense. Of course it would include Ramadan but it also includes uh, fasting outside of Ramadan and another hadith specifically about the virtue of Ramadan, a very a special quality about Ramadan that we'll see when we get into the hadith. Uh, so without further ado, <clears throat> the first hadith is on Sahal ibn Sa'ad, on Sahal ibn Sa'adin radiallahu an, on the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قال, إن في الجنة بابا يقال له الريان يدخل منه الصائمون يوم القيامة لا يدخل منه أحد غيرهم يقال أين الصائمون فيقومون لا يدخل منه أحد غيرهم فإذا دخلوا أغلق فلم يدخل منه أحد and that hadith is muttafaqun alay, meaning it's agreed upon between al-Bukhari and Muslim, rahimahumallah. So this hadith on the authority of Sahil ibn Sa'ad, radiallahu an, on the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, indeed, in Jannah, in paradise, there is a gate that is called Ar-Rayyan, a gate of Jannah, called Ar-Rayyan. And those that fast, the fasters, will enter it, will enter through it on the day of resurrection. No one will enter it other than them, meaning other than uh, Sa'imun, other than fasters. No one will enter it other than them. It will be said, where are the fasters? Ain al Sa'imun. So they will all get up, they will stand up, and no one will enter through it other than them. So when they have entered, it will be closed and no one will enter after that. All right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a special gate uh, through which only fasters will come through. So in this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ is pointing to uh, the fact that fasting as an act of worship and those that fast and, and do it well, uh, not just in Ramadan, but particularly for those that make it a habit to fast voluntarily uh, throughout the year, they have a special status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because fasting itself, that ibadah, has a special status. And when we reflect on it, what gives fasting that special status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an act of worship is uh, two, two things, two points, uh, amongst other points, but we want to uh, summarize here. The first is that with fasting, we are prohibiting ourselves from enjoying permissible desires, right? Outside of Ramadan, outside of the, uh, excuse me, within the daylight hours, <clears throat> the things that we are not allowed to do are ordinarily permissible. So 
what we are uh, demonstrating and manifesting when we fast, the obligatory fast of Ramadan or outside of Ramadan, by exercising self-control over what is ordinarily permissible, we are empowering ourselves to avoid the impermissible right? by, by stronger argument, a fortiori. So if we can successfully fast, that means that we can successfully avoid everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited in the ordinary sense. So it's a training of the nafs. And through fasting, we cultivate patience. And as we alluded to, it lays the groundwork for taqwa, for being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point is that with fasting, when you compare fasting to all other acts of worship, right? So compare fasting to uh, the salah, the five daily prayers, or the voluntary prayers that we might pray uh, throughout the day or in, on certain occasions. Uh, compare fasting to paying zakat, uh, for those of us that have the money to pay zakat. Compare fasting to uh, making the hajj. Out of all of those, it is fasting that is not susceptible to react. Of all the acts of worship, it's the only one where the one who is participating in it cannot do so ostentatiously. It's not something that can be shown off, all right? And this is something that is called uh, ashirk al asghar all right? The minor association of partners with Allah, riyat, doing acts of worship to show off, right? So if I'm in my salah, other people can see me making salah, right? It's not a secret that I'm making salah. So I, I can show off with it. Same thing with uh, paying zakah or giving charity. I can do so in a public way where people can see it and I can show off. Same thing with Hajj or Umrah. I could be uh, going through all of the different uh, tasks of the Hajj or, or Umrah. And while I'm doing that, people can see me and I'm showing off for them. But with fasting, when I'm fasting, it's secretive by its nature. Only Allah and the angels know that I'm fasting when I'm fasting. All right, so it's something that, it's, it's an act of worship that is, uh, it's covered, it's concealed. The only way anybody can know that we are saw imun is if we tell them, all right? So fasting by nature uh, does not lend itself to riyat, all right? So it is, it is profoundly sincere when we are uh, fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first hadith about fasting and the special status of the Sa'imun and that gate of Jannah, Ar-Rayyan, specifically for a Sa'imun. It's VIP status uh, on the day of resurrection. And then in the, in the, uh, the second hadith, it's uh, from Abu Huraira, radiallahu an, where he said, أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا جاء رمضان فتحت أبواب الجنة وغلقت أبواب النار وصفدت الشياطين and that is متفق عليه so on the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه he said that the prophet uh, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when Ramadan comes, the gates of Jannah are opened and the gates of the fire are closed and shayateen, devils, are chained. They're bound. This is a beautiful hadith because it gives us a glimpse 
uh, into as uh, we're titling this series, The Virtue of Ramadan. No other time during the year uh, do these things happen. The gates of paradise are opened and the gates of the hellfire are closed. And what is uh, particularly interesting is that shayateen, devils, are bound. They're chained, meaning they can't do anything in Ramadan. They can't affect us. They can't influence us. They can't whisper to us. They are bound during Ramadan. So in the binding of the shayateen for the entirety of the month, we are free. Meaning, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for us to move closer to Allah, is open. It's wide open. There is no obstruction insofar as the shayateen getting in our way. So what does that tell us? The only thing that can get in our way from access to our Lord during this month is our own selves, our own desires, our own shortcomings, our own sins. Right. So we can't blame the shayateen for anything. Now that's the case even outside of Ramadan. Everything goes back to us. We are fully responsible. Right. But even more so during Ramadan, if we find ourselves uh, disobeying Allah, if we find ourselves still remote from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we really need to do some introspection. All right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aiding us. He's giving us a boost by uh, chaining the shayateen so that they don't have access to us. Now, an important thing to mention is that the shayateen mentioned in the hadith those are shayateen ul jinn. All right. The shayateen ul ents, human devils, are still out there. So beware. And if you yourself are a human devil or act like a human devil, then get yourself together. All right. So the jinn, we don't have to worry about them. But we do still have to worry about our own nefs and human devils, other people that can lead us astray or have a negative or bad influence on us. So we'll end with those uh, thoughts on these two beautiful hadith. Again, we wish that everyone is enjoying their worship, enjoying the fasting, getting the most out of the month so far. And uh, as we said, cultivating that taqwa. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the tawfiq to complete the month better when we finish than we did when we started. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening and we will inshallah see you on the next one. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk wassalamu alaikum.